Hi, I'm Val. I love using Lucid with students. And today I wanted to show you how I use Lucid to help students develop stronger reasoning in mathematics. First, I wanted to introduce what cognitively guided math instruction is. Um, it's a research-backed approach to math that supports students in making meaning. And the CGI approach focuses on teachers understanding students' thinking and then building on the students' current mathematical knowledge. By focusing on students' thinking and reasoning processes, teachers are better able to identify issues, help students refine their thinking, and provide support. Research on CGI has shown that this approach effectively improves students' mathematical knowledge and skills, which also helps students keep a positive attitude toward math. And I've included some books here, some citations, if you want to learn more about um, cognitively guided math instruction. One thing that sets CGI apart from traditional math instruction is taking the time to allow students to make models of their thinking. Although it seems faster to just tell students the algorithm or the steps, the procedure, taking time to listen to students' reasoning and then help them reach the next level of mathematical understanding actually results in deeper learning. So it does take a little longer initially to help students develop these powerful meanings, but the investment is worthwhile in the long run. If students can develop powerful meanings for foundational mathematical ideas, everything that comes after is going to be easier for them. It's gonna build more quickly and meaningfully. So Lucid is fantastic. Um, it's a very versatile tool. It's perfect for supporting student creation of models um, because they can, they can use drag and drop shapes. They can use um, images. They can use the pen tool. There are just the arrows. Everything about Lucid is conducive to making models of mathematical thinking and reasoning. Um, I do want to give some examples. Fractions, um, you know, we teach fractions over several years in elementary school, and it's really hard for students. And so I'm going to show you some ways that students use Lucid to reason about fractions. Um, and this is just kind of an example of how you might start um, talking about fractions with students in the earliest grades. So even our kindergartners and first graders, you can use whole numbers and help them develop ideas about grouping and partitioning. And so here's one idea of an activity that they could do. Um, also, you could have all of the apples, take them out of the baskets and put them in, uh, in an image bank here and have the students drag and drop them. That's going to help them get thinking about grouping and prepare them for more um, learning about fractions. I actually took um, this question and I, and I did attempt it um, with a kindergartner. <laughs> and this is beyond what, what kindergartners do um, we don't talk about fractions in kindergarten usually, but I think that just speaks to the power of having students make models of their reasoning. They can think through it and you're, they, they will surprise you at how much they know and how easily they can be um, hit that next level. So I did put some ideas here um, when you're working with younger students. It's going to be easier for them if you create a bank of images for them to pull from. Their fine motor control is still developing, so I had problems with the pen tool with kindergarten students. Um, and then if you have any left-handed students, they have trouble with, you know, a traditional mouse where they might be right-clicking accidentally all the time, which is going to be difficult. Um, and then spelling and typing are difficult, so if you want them to give an answer, allow them to verbalize that answer. They can tell it to you directly after they make their model, or you can have them use the loom integration and record themselves verbally explaining. But I want to show you um, the first time I gave this question about four students and trying to divide up five candy bars um, to a kindergartner, the kindergartner's response, well, so this was the model that the kindergartner made, and the kindergartner's solution was to invite another friend and give that friend the fifth candy bar. So, um, you know, the point of making models is not that they get the answer correct on the first try. It's really about understanding where they are in their understanding and trying to help push them to the next step. So I had conversations with this student and said, okay, well, what if there aren't any other friends around and we really have to try to find a way to divide up this bar in so that all four friends can have some. And that did end up leading to a model that looked like this where each friend got a candy bar and then this bar is divided up. So they used, they used the arrow tool to, dry, to draw dividing lines. Um, the pen tool was just too hard for a kindergartner. 
Um, but you can see from the model of their thinking that they are absolutely on the right track now. They are thinking about ways that they can cut this fifth bar up um, equally so that all four people get the same amount. You know, the lines aren't perfectly spaced or perfectly um, aligned with the edges, but the point is that the student knows and understands and they're creating something that shows their understanding. Um, this, I switched the numbers up a little bit. This student was uh, a third grader and you can tell that they have, these are the three children. <laughs> they created a little icon. They used the drawing tool and pointed and each child gets one bar and then they divided up the other two bars and they color coded it. So this, this black line represents that this child would also get these two pieces and you can see there's orange and then blue and then the student typed their answer at the bottom. This student really struggled with the problem. Um, when I, you know, it was, I, I wasn't sure what to make of this visual representation at first. You have to talk to students and try to understand um, what's going on. And when we started talking about it, I said, okay, what are these small rectangles right or small squares right here? And the student said, well, I knew I was going to have to like cut the bar up. And I said, okay. And at, at that early point, the student was confused about how, how much it would have to be cut up. And um, if you notice, the student went to all the trouble to create <laughs> these pieces. Um, they tried to take the whole and then create pieces and then divide those up. So they... <laughs> They were very um, diligent in, in getting all of these pieces out, divided out correctly. And the first time they, they did this first bar and they had divided it up into sixths um, and then realized that each person got two. And then for the second bar, they divided it up into thirds and realized that each person would get one third. And so then we had to have a conversation about what does this mean? Well, so there's a one whole, two sixths and the one third. And so we kept talking, we kept talking. We also noticed, oops, sorry. Um, the student really did, did such a good job making these equivalent. Um, and so we talked about how one third and two sixths are the same thing. And by the end of the conversation, the student was able to answer and kind of clarify their thinking more. Um, and so you can see that they typed an answer right here. Each person gets one and two thirds of a candy bar. So I hope this gives you an idea of ways that you can use Lucid to have students create models of their thinking. Again, the point is not that students do everything right the first time or that they're demonstrating proficiency. This is really for the teacher to know. So we as instructors learn so much from the models that our students create and by talking with our students about their understanding. Um, that's the best way for us to fill in gaps in their understanding is to meet them where they are. And Lucid and creating models is the absolute best way to do that.